listening to the Apollo Podcast Network. Tucker. is up everybody welcome back to another edition of beyond the diamond podcast here on the apollo podcast network brian lima apollo des here with you follow us on twitter at b lima 790 at apollo des one and of course at apollo h o u and tonight's guest joining us from florida king tuck himself kyle tucker hey man appreciate it appreciate you uh hanging out with us taking some time how's it going man how's uh how's the offseason treating you yeah it's great um you know happy to be home happy to see the family every day and hang out and you know, get ready for next year, start working out and stuff. So it's, you know, it's a shorter off season just because we played so long into the postseason. But um, I mean, that was worth it. And, you know, we're, we're ready for next year. King Tuck, the chosen one, Ted, all this shit. Kyle, how do you, how do you just channel all that one? But in your major league career, you've had a lot of short off seasons. I mean, in 19, obviously, and now in, 20, you know, one game away in the 2021, like a lot of people don't get that their entire career. And that's just something right off the jump for you. That's got to be really special one, but two, how do you manage all this? Yeah. Like, like, like you said, um, it's, uh, it feels like every single year we're making a deep run in the playoffs. So in that sense, it, this just feels like a normal off season just because we do it all the time. And it just seems like a normal off season for us. Um, so that's kind of how I view it. Um, I know well, like we were still playing, you know, we're in the ALCS and the world series and guys have, you know, all my friends like in the, that are on other teams or like guys back home, um, have been home for like a month and I'm like, dang, that, that'd be nice. But like, we're making a world series run, so you can't be too mad. Um, 100%. but yeah, um, you know, it's, it seems like every year we're, we're one of the last teams playing. So, you know, for me, the off season is just like a normal off season, just cause that's really what I'm really all i'm really used to yeah i mean uh so you make your mlb debut in 2018 you go to uh, an alcs obviously you lose to the red sox 2019 back to the world series unfortunately lose to the nationals 2020 covid year but you still make it to the alcs and 2021 another world series run um take me back to when you first came up to where you are now just the whole ride that has been your major league career from when you walk out into Minute Maid park for the first time to, you know, getting knocked out, unfortunately, uh, in the World Series. Just kind of take me through that ride. Yeah, so, you know, first getting called up, it's a little weird just because um, outside of spring training and, like, seeing these guys every now and then because you're in minor league camp, you might come up for a game or two. Um, It's kind of weird and, like, surreal just because, you know, I'm playing with Carlos Correa, Altuve, Bregman, like, guys that I'm, you know, look up to, and now you're playing against guys on other teams, like, Pujols who I've been watching my entire life and you know just other guys around the league that have, you know you look up to as a kid and you come up and you're like oh dang like this is legit um so it, it's pretty cool in that aspect and then you know over time you get used to it but there's always that thing like that yeah, was pretty cool like even now I'm like dang L2 is next to me like on the plane or something um but it, it it's definitely you know, life-changing when, you know, you're playing in the minor leagues, at the, like, it's really cool and stuff, but then you get on the big league stage and now you got 40, 50,000 people in a packed stadium. Like, it's on TV, like, everyone's watching, and, you know, it's it's really cool. Um, and unfortunately, so, unfortunately for you, 40, 50,000 fans talking all kinds of shit to you here lately. Yeah, um, you try and ignore that. And a lot, of, a lot of the time you just, like, you don't even hear it um, unless you're, like, hanging out in the dugout and you're, like, just messing around. <laughs> But, um, yeah, when I first got called up, um, I played, like, an okay amount. Um, I would get a good amount of, like, pinch hits. I'd, you know, maybe pinch runner defense and, you know, I'd get a couple starts. Um, then I went up and down for, you know, that the, and was 18 and then 19. 19, I got called up in September. And I played, like, a solid amount in September. I, played, I think I played 22 games, which, um, you know, not playing the whole year and then getting called up in September and playing that many games is pretty good. And I did pretty well. Um, then that was my first like actual experience of, you know, postseason ball. Cause you know, in the minor leagues, like we've played, you know, we've made the playoffs and stuff, but um, it's not like everyone like starts to come to those, to those games. So, you know, big, big league 
playoffs is, is a whole different atmosphere. It, it, it's sick. Um, I mean, I, I played like a, like a little bit of a pinch run, pinch hit. And I think I had like two or three starts that, that first postseason for me throughout the whole, was it the world series? Um, which is kind of cool. Cause it was actually like technically my second year, but like, you know, my first year I didn't make, I didn't make the playoff roster. They went on and um, played it. And then the second year, you know, on playoff roster and I'm on a world series roster and that's sick. Um, you know, not many people get to play in the world series um, or be on the roster. So, you know, that, that just being on the roster, not even playing was cool for me. For um, sure. And then COVID year, weird year for everyone. Um, we were just glad we got to play. Um, we didn't have that great of a year as, as a whole, but made, made the playoffs, extended, extended teams in the playoffs. And, you know, we kind of showed really who we were, who we were in the playoffs. You know, we were getting after it offensively and defensively. We were pitching really well. And um, we just came up a game short against the Rays, pushing that game seven, losing it, which was tough. But, um, you know, solid year. And then last year, you know, we got a lot of hate on us, but um, we kind of put that to the side, just played our own game. And um, it got us back to the World Series and having, a, having another chance at it. Unfortunately, we didn't win, but, you know, I think I think we proved a lot of people wrong and that we're a really good ball club no matter what. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'll say it as a, not a member of the team, but like, fuck them, we ball. You know what I mean? Like, just so on the outside looking in. But uh, you don't have to agree with me at all about saying that, Kyle. But uh, the other stuff, like, obviously, your, your pedigree, the fifth overall, uh, going to Florida. I want to talk about that because, like, growing up, and you're a little younger than us, but... Man, the Florida bath with the composite orange when that first dropped, obviously Preston, you, you know, was there and you, you had a brother yeah. to lean on throughout the process. But like, can you take us back to like, even though you didn't sign with Florida, but like going through the recruiting stuff and, and all that, obviously being a, a, a in Florida and stuff like that. But like, I mean, that sold me when I first saw when Florida rocked the composite orange bats, because that that was just that was sick when they dropped it on the scene on the college yeah. level. Yeah, Um. for me, I'm a you know, a big college guy. Um, you know, my, both my parents went to college, my brother, sister went to college. Um, my brother, both my sister, both went to Florida, which was where I was committed. So I, I was, you know, pretty locked down in Florida and then, you know, draft came, some stuff came up. So then I eventually went with the, you know, getting drafted and just signing that route. Um, but like in high school, like college recruiting and stuff and like even pro, like, for the draft and stuff. Um, I don't know like how other high school teams do it, but we take BP like every day we take it before our games and stuff like after school. And there's always like 10, 15, you know, scouts there from different teams just hanging out and watching. Um, not like just solely me, but like, like Jake Woodford, he's with the Cardinals pitcher. Um, you know, he's, he was my draft, my draft class too, my age. Um, so he's there to see them and um, whoever else out there to, that they're there to scout. Um, so it was pretty, um, pretty crazy. I don't think, you know, you have 20 pro scouts to show up at every high school game. Um, but you know, we, we just had fun with it. We don't like, even now we don't, we don't try and put too much pressure on them. Like, yeah, there's scouts in the stands, but we're still out there trying to have fun playing because that's what they want to see anyways. Now, Kyle, I wanted to, to ask you about after you got drafted and then you, you make your way through the system um, you make your major league debut in 2018, but prior to that spring training, you go off, you have a couple of bombs, you're stealing bags, you're hitting doubles left and right. And then for some reason, some people decided to give you the nickname of Ted after Ted Williams, they, they, you know, say that your, your swing kind of mimics Ted Williams, which kind of is unfair for a young player that you were at that time. And I think the biggest thing for me is that's obviously unfair because Ted Williams is one of a kind. But it, but did it do anything to your mindset? Did it put pressure on you? Did you not even care about it? You're like, oh, that's that's cool. I'm just trying to make tr trying to make the big league club. Um, did it have any effect? I mean, just kind of kind of take me through your thought process on that. Being a young player, take take a step back, back and remember what it was like back then. Yeah. So, you know, I've I've heard that nickname. Um, like some people make compare. Like you get a player cop whenever you know you're in high school or college or whatever, like coming up. Um, and that was just like, someone kind of made that player comp for me. Um, but like, we never talk about it in the clubhouse. Like you never like, Oh, he's a player comp or whatever. So like, it never really affected me. Um, it was more like just media talking. Um, yeah. 
but yeah and that spring training I, th I think that's like the only spring training i actually like have done well in so like i think it like in the media and everything it got like more hyped about it yeah because uh, y'all y'all came back to minute may park to play a couple of games and i want to say you hit a bomb in one of those games yeah. and yeah, then all the local media is there and it blows up even more yeah i think i had one ab and i had a grand slam that's what it uh, was yeah yeah and like i hit like 380 with like seven homers in spring training and i'm like i've never done this like i know i'm like in me, me in spring training i try not to obviously but for some reason it always works out like i hit like 200 with like no home runs and like maybe one or two stolen bases um which for me is fine just because it's spring training like you're just trying to get used to playing baseball again so it's not that big of a deal for me um but that was like the one spring training like i, I went off and like yeah. every Everyone like was that was like my first real shot at maybe making a I, I wasn't, but maybe making the team out of camp. Um, but if I did well, like I could get called up at some point, which I did. Um with so with like the talk of you know, Ted Williams or like whatever other nickname and with me doing really well in spring training, like I think it all just got hyped up with that, but it never really affected me because like I don't know. We like in the clubhouse, we just hang out, like mess around. Like we're all like normal people. We just play baseball for a living. Right. Um, so like no one, no one calls you by like a you know, player comps nickname or anything. And you don't get, you can't, we kind of stay away from the media in, ter in terms of that, because, you know, if you're too like deep into it, like it'll start, like you might start thinking about it a little bit and stuff. So, you know, for me, it never really affected me. Like, even though, like, I, I got called up, like, didn't really do that well. And, like, people probably, like, bashed me or whatever for a while. But um, I wasn't really affected I'm affected about that. I knew, I knew what type of player I am and what I can do. So I didn't really care. Kyle, how do you, being a ball player, and obviously me and Brad played a way lesser level, but obviously everyone has an approach. Everyone has something they take to the field every day, their routine. This past year, I feel like a month and a half, you were just snake bit. You were hitting balls 150 miles an hour, just sticking balls all over the field, and they were just finding gloves. How do you just trust the process in that where you're like, I'm doing everything right. It's just shitty luck right now. But mm -hmm. to to keep maintaining, because there, there's got to be come to a point where you're just like, I got to change everything up. Ball players are very superstitious. We change, we go high socks, low socks, you're changing gloves up, you know. How do you just maintain your process and stay true to it? Yeah, didn't you didn't you try batting gloves at one point during that kind of little slump you had? Right? Well, I did it. I did it in Colorado because it was freezing and oh, stuff. Yeah. We were we were there. We were there. We yeah, were, we, we traveled there. there. It was yeah. miserable, by the yeah, way. Awful. If you didn't know, we we're in the stands. We yeah. got that sick ass <laughs> yeah, catch. We were we were we were sitting there freezing our asses off. But yeah, but yeah, I wore it then just because I was. The main reason for that was I was just freezing and I was like, I can't feel my hands. I don't want to break my hands swinging a bat. Um, and then after that, I used it for like a couple more games. And I was like, all right, I'm done with this. But yeah, it was kind of like that. But I was barreling balls, you know, left field, center field, right field, just at guys. I did like top spin a lot of balls and I could have hit a good amount of balls like on the ground pole side that it, it was just at the guy. So, um, but that was on me. I'm hitting ground balls to the first baseman. But yeah, it, it's really tough because, you know, you have guys from 98 out there and you're like, you finally barrel up a ball and it, like the center fielder doesn't have to move. He just stands there and catches it. So you take two steps out of the box and see that and you're like, great. Like this is the 10th time in 15 at, at bats. Like the guy hasn't even moved to catch the ball. Um, so it is tough, but I mean, what, like you can't do anything about it. You just got to keep doing like at some point, if you're barreling every ball at 105, like they're going to fall and you just got to keep reminding yourself that it sucks to go through because you're like, I I'm terror. I'm like the worst player ever. Like this, this sucks, but that's why we play 162 games. If you do that over 162 two games, you're you know going to be a really good player because it's all going to eventually turn around. Yeah, baseball is the, the crazy game where you can barrel everything up 10 times in a row, and then on number 11, your 11th at bat, you can have a broken bat single, and that'll get you through the slump. Mm -hmm. It's crazy yeah. how, that, how that works. What a to, – to segue a bit, Kyle Tucker, the human being, and, and that's why a lot of people tune in is 
connecting the bridge from Apollo to, to you guys is people don't realize you guys are human beings, right? Like you guys mm-hmm. could, you could have a bad day or you bad sleep. You have a, a fight argument with a significant other, and then you have to roll out and face 95 for four at bats. And you know, <laughs> you're under this, this, you know, Twitter sports media microscope, but Kyle Tucker, the human cool. being, what are you doing in the off season? Are you, what are you, are you on Netflix? You, I know you game a little bit, Fortnite kind of guy. What, what, what's, what are you doing as Kyle Tucker, the human being? So everyone else can realize like, Hey, they're not just some computer on, on the screen every single mm-hmm. day. Yeah. Like you said, we're just normal people. Um, I mean, even me younger, when I was younger, like I, I watched games, like even like I'll go to uh, lightning games, hockey games here. Nice. I'll, oh, dang. I got it. Like when you watch like Stam coast or Kucherov or, Vasilevsky like the players on their team you're like oh like this is sick but then I'm like do you think that they do that if they come to like a baseball game too and like we're just normal people as well yeah um, so it, it's kind of funny like if you go to like a football game like we got the bucks here um and we'll be like cheering them on and stuff um I'm, I'm always like you think they do that to us too I was like <laughs> I, I know they're normal people like I, I can see them like go to Publix or um, oh man, Publix, dude! Oh yeah, do you, do, you little... cru- do, do you get do you crush pub subs? Absolutely, oh, yeah. Man. So the, the little Buffalo the, chicken pub bu- sub, baby. That's I uh, do the chicken yeah. tender chicken tender pub sub is just phenomenal. That's the only thing I get there. No Let's free go. ads, Publix. Cut the check. Let's go. <laughs> Cut the check. <laughs> have you uh have you met Tom Brady? Um no, but um, come on, I- dude. At some point, you got to pull the look, man. I'm the I should have won a gold glove this year. I'm going to be an MVP someday. I play for the Astros. Like, come on, man. You scratch my back, I scratch yours or no? Like, I would. To meet Tom Brady, I would. I think he's, uh, like, living, like, next door, like, neighbors to, like, one of the one of my friends, like, parents that I know. Um, so I'm not going to tell where he lives, but. Yeah, don't dox him, I'm, no. You could dig on ditch him, that's what you're saying. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure if I just go over, over there and I see him, like, I can say hi or what's up or whatever, like. That's the thing. He's like, he's a normal person too. Um, right. He doesn't want people coming up to his house where he hangs out and like gets away from football. And now everyone's like at his house trying to see him. Um, Cause it's kind of weird. You're at your house and now you have 10,000 fans sitting out in the street hang- waiting for you to leave. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Like, you know, some of my friends are watching the game and there's, or like a football game. Uh, they're like, oh, like how, do, like how do you throw that interception? Or like, like how do you fumble that, miss the kick, or whatever? I'm like, do you guys say this like when you watch our games too? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, like, I'm like, if I strike out, are you like, what the? Well, like, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, they like, probably are. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> they like kind of think about it. They're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. De- Des and I go through that with some of the the people that we know. <laughs> Just because we we got to play baseball in college and we know how hard the game is, and y'all play an even harder game because you're up so such an elite level. And then you know there's games where a, a blown save will happen or a random pass ball or something, just and people just try to crucify you guys. And it's like, boys, these guys play <laughs> 162, baby. It's like, dude, it's it's game 30, man. It's it, we're in April, yeah. like we're in May. Like relax, like these things are gonna happen. Like this game is a game of failure. If you succeed thirty percent of the time at the plate, you're going to be a Hall of Famer. Like, let's 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 go. Let's let's have some feel. But uh, yeah, so we always like like this. So we always try to get on here, and, and when we talk to professional athletes, we just try to, you know, let the following know that you're a human being just like us. You know? Yeah, it's not like I'm like I'm I'm trying like <laughs> yeah got, yeah disgusting. Like I know like if I'm if, like we watch baseball other baseball games like in the clubhouse if they're playing a day game and we got a night game on. And like the camera from what center field, like the guy throws a fastball, like middle way, like on TV, you're like, Oh, you should probably swing at that. But like when you're at the plate, you're like, bro, that moves so much. Like I don't even see it. And like, Mm -hmm. it gets you, gets on you really quick and it's really hard. And it's like, trust me, like I'm trying, but it it sucks. This guy's throwing eight and like, he has five pitches. I don't know which one he's going to throw. Like it's hard, but I am we did a uh, we did a YouTube challenge, a hundred mile per hour challenge. We got in the cages, all our, you know, content creators, you know, just slap dicks in the cage, put it at a hundred, and and we did a YouTube video, right? And mm-hmm. I I kid you not when I say this, there were so many people oh, that man. like on in the comments were like, oh my god, that's really hard. I was like, it took us 
slap dicks getting in the cage to see a hundred. And that's what made it click that it was really hard. I was like, these dudes yeah. face that every single day for 162 mm-hmm. from different arm angles, different stuff. I was like, this is what they see. And ours is coming to flat, this a hundred flat. And I was like, yeah. bro, they're, they're, yeah. they're moving the ball. They're, they're doing all this crazy shit. Pitching ninjas doing all this different things mm-hmm. of all the pitchers in the league. I'm like, the thing is, you know that you're going to get a fastball at a hundred yeah. and we're like, we're going to get a fastball at 100, and he also throws a changeup, a slider, and a curveball, and a, like a split and stuff. So oh, he yeah. also. Lord forbid he pulls a, the, the, the cord on you. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I mean, you guys, you guys are having a tough time just hitting a fastball, knowing that it's coming every single, and that's all you're going to get. Right. And then adding four more pitches on top of that that you have to hit at the same speed, it sucks, which is why not a whole lot of people can do it because it's really hard. But yeah. To, to hit the 100 mile an hour, I had an ass out, kept the hands back, and then just kind of literally at the last minute, like throw the hands, like an oh yep. shit swing. Like, oh my God, I got to foul this off to stay in the count. And, a, and he, I had just, punching, he had a punching Judy. Punch of Judy. Let's, let's, just, let's yeah. just say what it was. I was trying to stay away from that, but yeah, it was a punch of Judy. Look, I made contact. I don't give a shit. These guys, you, you and, and fellow, daddy big, hacks. fellow big leaguers are sitting on 100. And, and, mm-hmm. and launching balls out of stadiums and, and into, into, you know, the outfield deck and us slap dicks and, and has beens are doing everything we can to, to foul off 85. Like, <laughs> and people like Des said, man, people on Twitter, when we posted and people in our YouTube comments were like shocked, like mm-hmm. absolutely shocked. Oh my God, Des Lima and, and, and the other guys are struggling, man. I, that looks hard. No shit. Yeah. I know. Like, like we'll be in a, We'll be like on the bench or like during BP or something, uh, where there's like a bunch of people in the stands already. And like I'll like earlier in the year, I'd be with like Miles and Granky. And like we always love like messing with them and like throwing them like random questions. We'll be like, Zach. <laughs> it, it, like if you face everyone in the stadium right now, what like one A B, how many guys are getting a hit off you? And he would like actually think about it and like kind of do the math and he's like, ten. <laughs> He's like, well, you got to think about it. Like, maybe half the people are athletic and like know how to swing a bat, and then they haven't swung a bat in ten years, probably. And like, this is like a Hall, Hall of Fame pitcher, and like, even though he's starting eighty-eight, like, it's not an easy eighty-eight, and he's got a bunch of other pitches that move everywhere, and he can throw it wherever he wants. So, like, just like thinking about that, like, there's forty thousand people in the stands, like ten of them okay. probably get it right. Contact, like, yeah. 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 What uh? When did the stretch come about? I gotta ask that. Obviously, when when you get one at Minute Maid Park, it goes it goes a distance. But I, I just love the nonchalant, just just the it, it's smooth. Yeah. It's a smooth operation. So I want to I want to unpack that a little bit. So um, I forget what like the first time I like did it like in a game uh like on a homer was at Dodger Stadium, um, but we we were kind of doing that like beforehand, like me Castro. Um, he would like go to give you like a fist bump or whatever and like hit like do the little stretch yeah. thing and like mess with you or whatever. Um, so we would, I'd, I'd always do that back to him and like with other guys. Um, so it was like just kind of funny. And I was like, because like, like when you hit a homer, like you, you got to do something cool around there, like whether even if it's like something simple for sure. Because uh, I was just going like giving Omar a high five or whatever. Uh, and I was like, just thinking, like, what, what can I do? So then I was like, oh, let's just hit him with our arm stretch thing, um, or like a deke. And I didn't, I didn't tell him about it. So like, we were like, Let, let's see his reaction first. So if you go back and like look at the like Homer, um, like it, it, it's pretty funny, like especially with us, like knowing Omar and stuff. Like he got pissed at me. <laughs> so you said you deked his ass. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like rounding third. Before I ran it there, I was like, do I actually do this to him right now? And then, like, I did it to him, and, like, you can see him, like, be, like, super confused and, like, look at me. <laughs> and then, That's yeah, funny. and he comes up to me uh, while we're, like, grabbing dinner, like, after the game. And he's, and he's like, getting on me, like, yelling at me. He's like, don't do that to me ever again. <laughs> and, and then, and, like, we just started doing that every, every homer. and Or, like, whenever, like, someone uh, someone scored a – run or like someone else had a homer i'd do it to them and like it, it kind of just went from there and ever uh, like all the fans i guess loved it um so it was, it was just something fun like that but that's kind of how it started like me castro hit like just fake a fist bump and 
kind of just went from there. Yeah. It, it's fu- it's funny you say that about Omar because we went to a game. It was me, Brian, oh, Colin, yeah, right. and Josh. And we were about a row behind Omar at third. And it was Jake, Jake Myers just got called up. Yeah. And I think he was, I think he was uh, a pinch runner. He tagged up the third. It was a play at the plate. He was he was rolled out, but he the, the overturned it, or whatever. But as he tur- as he was in, with the tag, we are we're maybe a little juiced up, a little, little <laughs> lubricated a little bit. And we're just like cinema Omar. We're like, we're we're yelling like number 22 in our hearts, number one. Yeah, like, we're just we're just big Omar fans. We're just like cinema, dude. cinema. Jake takes off and it's a, it's shallow, right? And we're like, oh fuck. He's, oh, he's shit, actually he's, going. He's sending him. Oh he's shit. He's sending him. And he's out. And Omar turns around and just death stare and we're Dude. standing up and we're the only ones standing up we're like it was a it was a day game yeah it was a day, was game. A day we game. Like, we did yeah. that dumb that dumb like look around like, like is look, he looking at us they're like thank god they overturned it yeah we dude, about that's exactly get, what we did we we're so, about to get ejected so, so they overturn it right and so of course all all four of us are going nuts you know uh, high-fiving and stuff and then we look back at omar and we're like that that's on, that's on you, Omar. Call son, that boy runs for you. Oh my God! He looked back at us, and we were just had beers in our hand, like yeah. It was it was hilarious, dude. It was like oh, a father man, so being funny. so disappointed. Oh, he was so child. mad at us. Oh my God, dude! He looked dead ass at us, and he was so mad. It was so funny. Right. Oh my gosh! Doesn't see him doing that. <laughs> but how how does that feel? Like the Astros are just this this culture of winning throughout, but like to to have coaches that you come, you come up with in the system to then be elevated to the show as well. Like that's got also got to be a sense of like uh, a feeling of like, I can lean on this guy because he was with me in, in my growing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, you know, I'm, re- I'm really happy for Omar. Um, was it last year it was his first year in the big leagues. Mm-hmm. Um, he was with us again last year, but I had him as a manager when I was in low a. Um, and I think I had him in high the following year when we were at Campbell University. Um, so I've, I've had him manage me for two years, roughly. Um, and then like, like we're, we're, we're boys with him. Like we, we mess around with him, hang out with him all the time, like off the field and stuff, like in the minor leagues. Um, but I like, like, I'm so happy for him. Like, like he, he's been in the Astros organization for like 15 ish years or so, maybe more. Um, but you know now he's in the big leagues like this is where he wanted to be uh so i'm really happy for him but it also makes us you know it definitely makes us feel confident in him like we we trust him with everything like whether he sends us home or holds us up um and he he pretty much tells it like it is like if he messes up like holding us when he could have sent us like he'll he'll get pissed and like like let us like dang i should have like sent you right there you could have had it that's on me um but like we're uh, I'm always like, nah, you're good, Omar. Like, you're straight. Yeah. But it's it's awesome. Like, like <laughs> I love having them up there. Um, same with everyone else else on the staff. And you know, th- they're a great group of guys, and we we love having them on the on the team with us. So so to continue to talk about uh, your coaches and your managers. Obviously, when you made your debut, AJ Hinch was the manager of the Houston Astros. That whole thing happened. Dusty Baker comes in, crafty veteran, been in the league for years and years and years arguably uh, top five, top 10 managers of all time, got so many wins with different organizations. What, um, I guess, what was your first thoughts when you heard that Dusty Baker was going to be your manager? And then two, what's it like playing for Dusty after you got to know him a little bit, you figure out, you know, uh, his style and how he's kind of in the middle of, he's got a little bit analytical, but he's got the old school. I mean, he's got the wristbands, the toothpick, all that, just just kind of a two-part question. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know, we 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 knew like we were gonna have another manager. Um, we knew there was a couple different guys that you know were being interviewed for it. Um, and we heard Dusty was gonna be manager. Uh, we 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 know obviously his reputation. He's been been a player, been a manager, um, been on the coaching staff. So you know, he's he's been around the game, you know, basically his whole life and has a lot of knowledge of it. So, um. But like we, I don't know about anyone else, but I've never met him before, you know, last year or the previous year, the first year we had him. Um, so I mean, I, I, everyone was just excited to get to spring training, um, get to see everyone, everyone again, you know, get to meet Dusty and everything. But 
I don't, I don't know how much Dusty's changed over the years. Um, you know, the first time I met him up until now, he's, he's been the same guy. Um, he's very welcoming. Uh, he'll, he'll bring in food for the players just like, cause he's been to all the, all the stadiums. So like he, he knows like all the good restaurant spots and stuff. So he'll like go to his restaurant when he gets to the city and like bring in extra food for the, like some of the players or like he'll leave like a dessert on someone's, uh, and someone's chair at the lock at the locker room, uh, for whatever occasion it is. And then he's got his wine. So like, yeah, we heard he's, he's, heard he's a big wine guy. Yeah. He's got a winery. I think out yeah. in Calif- California, that's the Baker family wines. And, mm-hmm. um, there's like a special occasion occasion or, um, you got something going on. Like he'll, he'll, he has wine with him all the time. I don't know how he like carries all this wine, <laughs> um, but he'll just like bring him out. And we're just like, I'm, like he just has like a hundred thousand bottles of wine in his locker room. Like, I don't know where he gets it from, but he has it with him every, every single time. There's one clubby that's just, Oh, his wine guy. That's just stocking <laughs> it all up. <laughs> I guess he has it with him everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, but I, I brought it back, um, open it up. It's pretty good. Um, I just have it like sitting in my kitchen now as like a memorabilia thing. Um, but yeah, Dusty's, Dusty's a cool guy. Um, he tells a lot of stories, tries to give you stories that helped him out when he was playing and what he's um, kind of realized that helped out other players as he's coached too. Um, Cause he, he, he's there to hang out with us and, you know, teach us a lot of stuff about the game and what he's learned over the years since, you know, he's been around the game more than anyone else. And he's done, he's hit, he's played the field as a player and now he's managed you know, a bunch of different guys. So he, 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 he does his best to try and make, make a relationship with the players and the coaching staff. And he, he, he does a really good job at it. What is it, what is it like being a guy? And I, I think it's different for, for your case because you had a brother that was in the show, obviously the accolades and, and, and the old regime, Jeff was like, you're untouchable. Do you hear that outside noise? And then two, when you're in this lineup with all these all-stars, these MVPs, these silver sluggers, all these different guys in the lineup that you could, they, they'd be three, four hole in any other lineup across, across the league. And, you know, it's scattered throughout your lineup. How does it feel to just bounce knowledge off them every single day? Because I think that's, that's rare. And people don't realize that because baseball, you got, everyone's a, a creature of habit and a creature of just obtaining all this information and bouncing ideas off each other. It, you guys have this soundboard that a lot of teams don't have in the league and, and it, it's rare. Yeah, like, like like you said, um, basically anyone in our lineup can hit anywhere in anyone else's lineup. Um, you know, Altuve, he, he's going to be at the top of the lineup in any lineup. Correa, Mike, Breggy, Yuli, Jordan, like those those, those guys are going to be like their main guys on any other team. It's just they're all on our team, so you gotta got to spread them out, um, yeah. which is a good thing because it puts a lot of pressure on the other team and pitchers can't be like, Oh, like I just got to get through Jordan. Well, now you have to face Bregman. And you're just like, Oh, now, I, now I just got to get through Bregman and I'm, and I'm good for a couple of hitters. Well, now you got to face Carlos and then you got to face Julie, me. Like it, it, I think it's really tough and like mentally draining because as a starter, you, you don't have to just get through the lineup one time. You got to get through it two, three times and you got to face all those guys every single time. So I feel like as a pitcher, it sucks um, just because you're like, I can't like take a break. I have to, I feel like I have to be perfect with everything because we, we make a lot of contact and we, we walk a good amount and we get a lot of extra base hits. So, you know, I think it's really tough for other guys um, just in other teams coming to play us just because we're so good offensively and we'll put up five to 10 runs basically every single game. And if, <laughs> I mean, if you go into the game knowing that you're going to give up five to 10 runs, most likely it sucks because you got to be on your A game. And, um, you know, obviously that doesn't happen every now, every time, like we're going to score one or two runs. Um, but, you know, I think it sucks for other teams having faced us like that and knowing that that's what you got to go through, which is a good thing for us because it makes it easier because you feel like you don't have to do everything on your team because, like, oh, like Jordan walked. Um, and now you gotta face 
Regnum. Like, I, I, I don't feel like I have to go up there and hit a home run every time because I have whoever else behind me. Um, so it makes a lot easier for everyone on the team. Talk, talking about Michael Brantley real quick, probably the most professional, one of the most professional and pure hitters in the game. And I don't think he gets enough credit. And I know Des agrees with me on that. Uh, Uncle Mike is a professional hitter. What's it like mm-hmm. to have him as a teammate and, and talk hitting with him? Because for him, he could go to another team and be easily be a, a three hole or a four hole. And for the Astros, he hits two hole. Mm-hmm. Or if, you know, if Dusty's feeling something different, he might make a few changes. But for the most part, he, he's a two hole hitter. And he's like the epitome of don't try to do too much. Ball's pitch on the outer half. He'll slap it the other way. Make a mistake in, he could put it over the right field fence or put it in right center field for a double. I mean, just a professional hitter. So just kind of, just, you know, having him as a teammate, what's that like and being able to bounce hitting off of him? Yeah, Mike, Mike's the best best person ever. Uh, you know, he's a great guy. Uh, he's probably the guy I hang out with the, with the most on our team. Um, our lockers are always, like, right next to each other. Um, and we, like, I always try and, like, hang out with him and, like, make basically, like, make him have more fun because yeah. he's always there, like, like he knows, like, what he has to do to be prepared for the game and do it well. Um, and I try and just, like, mess with him, let him have fun and stuff. Um, so I'll throw him out like a bunch of random, random questions, um, which he didn't like at the beginning of spring training. And then like throughout the season, he was like really looking forward to me, like ask him like hypothetical questions. Um, like what, like, like take, give us an example real quick off the dome. Like I would be like, Mike, if you didn't play baseball and like, what would be like your next like sport that you would play like professionally? Um, and he would like say golf or something um but i would just like throw out like little questions like that or, I, or i'd be like mike do you think you can be like an announcer or something or like work at be like a bagger at Publix or whatever <laughs> like whatever well, like whatever i'm thinking at the, at, right. at the yeah um and at the be- at the beginning of the season like he like in spring training he would always just be like like stop asking me such stupid questions um just because he's like he's 10 years older than me like i'm asking him like kid questions like just messing around like and Mike, then, if you're a fish, would you be? <laughs> what would you be? Would you be yeah. a goldfish, a bass, yeah. or a trout? Like, yeah, I'd ask him questions like that, and like at at, at first, um, he would just be like, "Stop asking me such stupid questions." And then, like as like the season went, like I would always just like keep asking him questions and stuff. And then, like he actually like started looking forward to it because he's like, "Oh, what is Tucker to come up with now?" Um, and he so started. He opened, call- up, he opened up to you a little bit. I know, like yeah. he's having and stuff. So I feel like you know that that's my part in Mike in Mike's life is let him have some fun, mess around with him, and hang out. Um, but he started calling me like Mister Hypothetical because I'd always come up with them with like random questions for him. But yeah, he he's probably got to hang out with the most. Um, like whenever he goes to hit in the cage, um, like I'll I'll go in there and just like sit there and watch, um, and then I'll hit after him. Um, most of the time I. Whenever, like, if I'm already in there hitting, like, I'll try and hurry it up so Mike can get in there just because he's, like, an older guy. He has 10-plus years. Like, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let him, like, continue his own routine and stuff. But, um, you know, my, my, Mike's a great guy. Um, you, you kind of ask for more out of a player, out of a player like, athletic, athletically or, like, just as a human. Um, he's a great guy. He does really well with media, does really well with other players. And, obviously, he's a great – you know, defender and hitter. And I'll, I'll always mess with him all the time because he always downplays how good he is because I'll be like, Mike, you're nasty. And he'll be like, Tuck, he threw me a changeup. All it, like, there wasn't a shortstop. All I had to do was hit the ball. And I was like, <laughs> and I'll be, yeah, but it was nasty, Mike. You're gross. And he'll be like, thanks, Tuck. <laughs> are, are That's you, awesome. Kyle Tucker, yeah. the Major League Baseball player, are, you grew up in this pre kind of analytics world right on the fringe of it. And so it's been in the game. Are you an analytics guy? What are you looking at? You don't have to divulge secrets that mm-hmm. you do and tip, tip anything the pitchers out here, but are, are you in, engulfing it? Or are you just like, I'm, I just collect barrels, bro. Like what, what's the vibe? Um, so I'll, I'll use a little bit of it. Um, I'm not like big into it, but I do think it helps a lot of guys. Um, for me, basically, I just look at how hard the guy throws and then 
um, like whatever else pitches it, he has. So basically, I'll be like, oh, he throws 96, has a curveball and a changeup, um, doesn't really throw a changeup. So I'll be like, all right, he just throws a fastball and curveball. So I'll sit on those two. You're hunting um, those. If, yeah. And if he throws a changeup, like I, I'll just spin on Hopefully, off. like see it, like if it's a strike and react to it and like basically just like let your instincts take over at that point. Um, but then like, I'll watch the videos um, because we have like videos of whatever starter that we're facing that day or the relievers. So you can see, Oh, like I'll see he throws 95. Like it looks like we'll have like break charts and stuff. So you can see if it like runs or whatever, but I don't really trust those as much because like, if you watch a video, you're like, oh, it doesn't really move as much as like the chart shows. So I'm just going to go off that. Like, I'll just be like, Oh, it's pretty straight. Um, so I'll just, Basically, look, he throws 94, 96, um, whatever pitches he has, and then I'll watch some video on it. And, it, like, for me, it's really quick. A lot of guys, like, stay in there and, like, really study it and stuff. But that's roughly all I do. Um, I do, a, like, a little bit more than that, but that's pretty much the basis of what I go off of. Yeah, when you're when – you're really barreling the balls up whether they fall for hits or not <clears throat> do you ever go to the plate and feel like balls look like beach balls to you you know to where you're really really zoned in and you just feel the most comfort you feel at the at the plate or are these pitchers so elite and so good that you never feel that way and you're just going back to trusting your instincts uh, and things like that so i think <clears throat> a lot of it has to do with just how mentally locked in you are um like your swing uh It'll be like you might be pulling out a little bit, but um, like if you're like mentally locked in and like really mentally like focused on not doing that, like you can get over it relatively quick. Um, I know it's it's hard it's hard to do that because you could also keep doing that for the next month, um, which will suck. But like if you mentally like get into it, cause, like a lot a lot of guys talk about the mental side of baseball, but that's really ninety five percent of the game. Yeah, and then. Um, I mean, for me, all I try and do is barrel balls and a lot of it depends on like the pitcher really. Cause some guys you'll see really well and you're like, I'm getting a hit, like, like I'm getting three hits today. Like it doesn't matter what he throws. Like I'm getting three hits. And a lot of guys you're like, I have, I have no idea how anyone touches this guy. Um, like I'll, I'll face guys that have like a six ERA and like he's getting shelled. And then I'll go up there and be like, I don't know how his guy, this guy's gross. Like, I don't know how anyone touches him. And then I'll face a guy that hasn't given up a, a run in three months. And I'll be like, this guy's the worst pitcher ever. <laughs> huh. um, like his fastball's flat right now. Like how the hell is he striking dudes out? Yeah. He'll, like he'll win like a Cy Young or something. And I'll be like, how? But like, <laughs> uh, like everyone's different. And everyone like views pitchers differently. Um, but I don't know. It's kind of kind of just like your mindset and just like your preference on certain guys. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty crazy that you just said that there are things that happen with your swing, um, like to where the front shoulder might be flying out a little bit, um, that you literally will have to battle for a month at a time. You know how many at bats you get in a month? I mean, like that's so many different different games, different days, different pitches you see, and you might be battling the same. A uh, little tweak that you have to make for a month. That's that's and the reason I'm bringing that up is because you know people that watch this are still we're going to go into next season, and you're still going to get crucified. People are still going to rip on you or rip on other professional athletes because they struggle. But in rea reality, you're playing 162 games. You're getting in hundreds and hundreds of at bats, and there might be a time where you're literally battling trying to keep your front shoulder in for an entire month. Like that's, that's just insane to me. I know. And it sucks when you're going through it. It really does. Cause you could be feeling great in the cage and you're like, Oh, I figured it out. And then you go in the box and you're like, I, I can, I can, I don't know how to hit anymore. Um, and you just roll over to the first baseman again. That's and then you're like, great. Like this is a, like we're going on two weeks where I haven't yeah. hit it. One, but the first base. Bar. Um, that's a crazy thing. Another crazy thing, Des, I'm, I, and I'm going to ask you too, since obviously, you know, you played college ball just like I did, but 
there's times where you are destroying baseballs, gap to gap shots, oppo bombs in BP. You feel good. And then you get in the box and your comfort level is absolutely blown. It's gone. You feel so uncomfortable. You feel lost at the plate. Obviously, yeah. Kyle, you just hit on it. You, you've gone through that. And Des, I'm sure you went through that at the college level. That's just how hard this game is. Yeah, I think that takes it back to the mental side where you'll you'll probably be trying to overcorrect something or like not correct it in a correct fashion. Or you know, sometimes you, you just need to be like, screw it. Like I'm just gonna try and launch a like launch a homer like 500 feet. And like that might help. Um, and sometimes you're like, I'm just gonna try and hit a ground ball to the pitcher, and that might help. Um, like last year, the first month I was hitting like 160, 170. Um, where like I was I was hitting the ball well and like it wasn't really going anywhere, but like guys were catching it or like I was rolling over a lot. And then, you know, like how I was saying, like I hang out with Mike all the time and you know, we talk hitting a lot. And he was like, It only it only takes like one swing, one A B, and like it'll be good. Like, don't worry about it. It's a long year. And then Mother's Day rolled around and I hit a homer. And I don't know if it was on the homer or like just like one of the ABs before, but like from then on, like I like I was barreling every ball, like I, like I was crushing homers, like getting knocks left and right, like. And it kind of goes back to what he said: like it only takes one swing to, like for something to click, and you probably like weren't even thinking about it, like something just happened, and you're like that felt really good, and I like stayed through a ball, hit it really well, like I got a knock and everything, so. I'm just going to try and go from there. And it's weird how baseball works like that. Like you, you could be in the cage for 10 hours every single day, trying to correct your swing and hit the ball the other way. And then you get in the game and you just roll over first for the next month. You can do that every single day. And then one day, like you'll swing at a ball. It'll feel really good. And you'll, you'll take off from there. So, I mean, like it, like it's weird to say like baseball like hitting is very random like obviously we work on our swing every single day and try and make it as consistent as as possible but when you're struggling it really sucks and sometimes it just takes like a swing to really turn your season around it's crazy you say that right because it it takes that one time like you said where you can you can get jammed your thumbs bust your thumbs are at the plate but you can just Mm -hmm. find that hole and then you're just like all right go time and the next two or three and then it's just the reverse of like, okay, I'm just barreling everything to everyone, but now it's, I'm now finding holes. And then that goes into barrels and to finding gaps and all that stuff. Um, I, I don't know if you know this. It could work the other way too. Cause like, I remember I was, we were, I think we were spacing Kikuchi at the end of the year. And I was like one AB, like the first AB, I was like, Oh, like I'm on it. And my second AB turn around, I go, I completely forgot how to hit. Yeah. <laughs> I like like the rest of the game. I was like, I don't know what to do, what I'm doing, but but how do you, how do you juggle that though? Like, I mean, it was very random. Like I I just didn't see one of the pitches. Um, and then I was like, like completely thrown off by it. And then I was just like, kind of like second guessing myself and I don't know. Like I was talking to Jake Myers about it. I was like, it's weird how like my first AB, like I felt so comfortable. And then my second AB, I was like, I like I might as well be hitting righty right now. Yeah. Like same. But um so that's that that goes into baseball being that, or, or hitting is uh literally every at bat is different, every pitch is different, right? And, Short memory, go to the next pitch, go to the next at bat. Mm-hmm. And Kikuchi's nasty, like he's got that yeah. little hitch as well, on top of all the movement he has, like yeah. Shit. Yeah, that, that like you're like oh I'm like I don't know how to hit anymore. That doesn't have happen as like all that often, but like it's it's like very random. Like like that like the first AB like I was very comfortable, and the second AB I was like what I'm like you like you guys could have hit for me and done the same. Like <laughs> hell yeah, I would have I would have pimped that strikeout out. I'll tell you that. Uh, Kyle, I would have tried you, to drop down a sack bunt. Do you do you know? Like, I, I, this is just, uh, it's random. But like, there is a, a a a faction of Astros Twitter that like you're kind of their demigod. Like, I, I don't know if you know this or not. So this may be breaking news to yourself. Oh. But uh, gear up, son. I mean, there's there's a faction out there that is just like 
Kyle Tucker ride or die. Like if you were, if you were the Rolling Stones, you'd be packing places out all over America right now with this, this little faction of people. You, do you, mm-hmm. do you know yeah. that? Or are you just like, you know, um, big league outside noise. You, you can big league us. You can big, it's fine. You can big league us. Dude, it's, it's cool. There are people that will literally tweet out. If no one got me, Kyle got me, or if no yeah. one got me and then they just post your picture. Yeah. Yeah, I see all that. Like, I get tagged in this stuff, and, like, it'll pop up on my stuff, and I'll see it. So, um, I don't know, like, to the extent of it, but I, I do know, like, a little bit about it. Um, but I think it also kind of pertains to how, like, I like, I did really well last year, and, like, I did pretty well, like, the year before. But, like, I don't really get talked about a whole lot just because, we're, we're like, the guys that I play with, like, you talk about Carlos Correa, who definitely, like, all these guys definitely They're deserve to yeah. the record and stuff. Like, Altuve, you know, Springer at the time, Correa, um, Yuli, like, and then, like, I obviously, like, I've only had, like, two years of actually playing time. So, like, not, probably not a whole lot of people, like, outside of, like, the Astros, like, fan base, like, knows a whole lot about me. Um, but, which is fine, like, Bro, you're you're dude, a budding dude, superstar. I'll yeah. fucking say it, dude. You're yeah, a budding you superstar. Are you kidding I, me, dude? Isn't it isn't it crazy that just a couple years ago there were people crazy enough to say that they wanted you traded, and now yeah. you're you know, and and I'll be a man, and I I will admit that I was I was one of those oh, people. Oh wow, dude, you gotta oh, admit really? your wrongs. You gotta admit your wrongs. I, I wanted you traded for JT Real Muto. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. I'll admit it. My I'll, bad. I'll, you I'll proved me that. wrong. I hit 141 my first year. You know, R- Real Muto is like the best, one of the best catchers in the game. He hits unbelievably, and he's a great catcher. Um, I mean, that's, it, that's either here, no, here nor there. Don't worry about it. It's in the past. <laughs> I, I'm I, a man. I admit it. We're moving on. We're he's moving a man. He's forward. forward. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess I'm like underrated. I yeah, guess I would definitely you were definitely Kyle Tucker, you were definitely, un, definitely underrated. You should have won the gold glove this year. Like in terms of like I guess hype, um, like I have all the numbers, like um, like I hit what 294, had 30 homers. Like I I I hit well. Um, you should have hit but, 394 if it wasn't right. for the first month and a half or, state or, or you could have hit 294, been a little bit flashier and then made it in the media a little more and, and pumped up the name. I see you got the gold chain with the Lulu shirt. So yeah, we're taking we're, a step up. We're getting yeah. flashy, baby. Let's I, go. I need to hang out with Siri more. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, if you want to get flashy, <laughs> hang out with Jose. The drip. Dude, he's got he's the drip god on the on the Astros. Oh, oh my God. man. Like, yeah, like, he had that hustle, he had that hustle single in the World Series. I thought he broke Ricky Henderson's record. I was dude, fucking there dude, for it. Man. We were at the we were at the uh, Ultra Club at uh, the World Series. We were way up in right in right field, dude, and we were hyped for that infield <laughs> single, dude. His reaction and everything. You would have thought we just won the fucking World Series, man. Uh, oh, like uh, when I think he pinch ran and scored that run. Uh, yeah. was it in the World Series, and then he had the yeah he had the slide yeah. and, he, and he got all crunk with it. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> they got, they got something else, man. That's the but drip yeah. god, dude. It'd be uh, hanging out. A little bit. <laughs> Hell yeah. So Kyle, we'll wrap up here. I know we took a lot of your time, but uh, my, my main focus now to Paul is just, I'm starting the MVP campaign. Like we're going to grassroots this, this son of a bitch. We're, we're about to make you the most freaking overrated, underrated player of all time. We're, we're about to just, I mean, when you come back to Houston after spring training, there's going to be billboards of oh, yeah. just yourself, just that, that little smile. We're going to get rocking. Uh, it's going to be great. It's so we're going to, we'll make another, we're going to make another shirt for you, but this time we're going to have the gold chain. We may even give you like a shorter gold chain. So you got two chains and Maybe we're going to bump those, it up, uh, dude. Big, uh, those big, TikTok the big Oakleys? Glasses? No, oh, the, the big, big the pit, the pit, the pit vipers. Yeah, a little pit. You want to put some pit vipers on top? Pit vipers. Put a little sauce on it. I'm with it, dude. Yeah. Let's go. Love it. Little... <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, man. We'll get you there, man. Don't worry. And you and can we just can throw us under the bus. Just throw yeah, us under absolutely. the bus. Be like, I don't even know these guys. I don't know. They yeah. did it. It's on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like. I don't really like. For me personally, I don't really care about all the hype. I know, like a lot of guys um love it but uh, like as long as i can keep hitting around 330 homers like and helping my team win like that's that's the most important part and then whatever else happens up after that 
in the media and stuff like with you guys hyping stuff up like I'll, i love it thank you guys but yeah <laughs> we're, it's true we're dude we're not sure we're, we're, we're the players media i was just gonna say we are not the standard <laughs> yeah, media man we are not the standard media so awesome. yeah no, we, we love you guys y'all y'all are great you heard it here that. thank you you heard it here dude i appreciate it yeah we, we definitely appreciate that tuck man and, and we appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us like this said i know we took up a little bit of your time but man we appreciate it It was a lot of fun all right, good. Th- th- thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Dad, we'll you- see you. Uh, we'll see you in spring training. We're gonna have a little Apollo house. Oh going. man, yeah, we, we told we man. told Bregs we told Bregs yeah. yesterday we're having a little little Apollo house. We get a little a little beer sponsor to float the bill. We'll have a little basketball court. We'll have a pool, a little podcast room, a little gaming room <laughs> yeah. for you to come in. We'll play some Fortnite shit. Well, shoot, <laughs> fucking rad in West Palm. Do you yeah. by chance? Do you, I'm sure you probably don't remember this. But we were at spring training last There's year. There's no way he remembers this. I know. I'm just saying, look, I got it for our guy, little bro. So we were, it was the last week of spring training. Uh, it was like a 6 p.m. game at home against the Nationals. Uh, we were up the right field line. It was Odo's first was, start. Yeah, it was Odo's first start. You're exactly right. Yeah. And you were playing right. And uh, you were full on, you know, you might or might not have been having a conversation with us. And we were yelling at you and you were like yelling back and, I'm not going to tell the exact story, but I was just little bro. One of our, one of our content creators yelled some crazy shit at you and, and you just kind of <laughs> smiled and waved at us. Oh uh, man. Yeah. I, I always think that's funny. Um, I don't try and like interact too much with the fans. Cause then I feel like I'm not like all in on the game, but I, I do like, like messing with them every now and then having some fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. like they're like, y'all are there to watch us play and like interact with us and have a good time. So it's it like, <clears throat> For, like for me, I like I'm just there to play the game and do well. But it is it is fun to like interact with you guys and like whether it's like turn around, but like when y'all say some stuff and like just stare at you or whatever. And then, like, <laughs> yeah. Just because like oh I, like I didn't think you'd like hear that or like turn around and do something. But um yeah, it it, it, is, it is it is pretty fun when y'all are whether you're like yelling at us and like you know getting or, on us and stuff like like rooting for the other team or like you're cheering for us like it's all good it's all you know you're rooting for your team and guys rooting for ours like until you're fun. until you're a dodgers fan and you, you throw some bottles at you yeah it's hands. a little, a little yeah. um i mean then you just get kicked out of the stands and you you just you, you just wasted a 14 dollar beer you know yeah and then like you can't enjoy the rest of the game and then it's just like not really worth it um yeah probably aren't going to be able to come back to the stadium or whatever, but um, I mean, it's your decision. You can do whatever you want, I guess. Yeah. We're so we're going to bust your balls in the off season and the in, in spring training for sure. Last question. <laughs> and we're, we're going to kill the interview right now, but what's the craziest thing outside of the, the outside noise you got over the last year and a half, but what was the craziest thing you ever heard in right field that just made you dislike one that was good or two that was like, Oh shit, I got to turn around and see who said that. <laughs> um i mean in right field uh i mean not a whole lot um like people will just yell at me and tell me how much i suck um and then i get it like a, i'll get a hit and they'll be like you still suck or like i'll strike out and they'll be like see i told you and i'm like you're probably right <laughs> uh, and then like i'm on deck and like guys are like who, whoever's like hitting in front of me like if we're playing on the road like people are like telling like the pitcher to hit him like in the head or like whatever. And I'm like, that's a little aggressive. That's, yeah. Like, Jesus Christ. Like we're all trying to like, I get like you guys can hate on us, but like, come on, now. go that far. Um, Like you're here to like watch a game and have fun, but like, whatever, like we're here to play baseball. So I'm not going to entertain it. And then, um, you, and then you, you drop dick on them and just yeah, hit, him with, then, hit him with a little, hit him with a little. <laughs> yeah back to the dugout staring at them or something they're oh. just like they can't say anything and they're like whatever but <laughs> uh, but yeah some like uncalled for things um you know people say stupid stupid stuff all the time but um you know like 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 i'm like i'm a normal person like i'll, I'll go to hockey games like whatever games and like interact with like the players but I, like i'm never gonna trash any other player when i'm at a game because i know how hard sports it is right so i'm never like, oh, you suck. Like, what are you doing? Um, but you know, some people yeah. are like they're assholes. Yeah. For the most for the most part, they're there having fun. Like they're 
like friendly like banter and stuff but you know sometimes people will get a little aggressive yeah so fuck him we ball i'll say that unofficially on behalf of uh kyle zucker that's unofficially but kyle thanks for coming on bro um see you hopefully in, in spring training and brian anything anything else yeah man my, my last thing is i know you're a, a hockey fan so when the you know when the arizona coyotes or phoenix coyotes whatever the nhl team is relocates to houston <laughs> Uh, first game on us. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Right there some in Toyota Center. Found some brews and we'll we'll have a little hockey hockey night. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks again, Kyle. Appreciate you coming on. Des, you got anything before we get here? Nothing. Thanks, bro. Yep. Thanks for having yeah. me. And that's Kyle Tucker of the Houston Astros, outfielder for the Astros. Should have won the gold glove. I'll put it back out there. Kyle, thanks for joining us. That's going to do it here for another edition of Beyond the Diamond Podcast. Brian Lima, Paulo Des. Follow us on Twitter at BLima790. At Apollo Des One, of course, at Apollo H O U. That's going to do it. Until next time, everybody. Peace.